the existence of a dead humanoid civilization on Mars that was destroyed by a massive nuclear explosion is explained by physics. I'll leave a link below for you for the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean. And uh, in one of those books, I remember he talked about an exiled Atlantean general. He was buried under a face on Mars and his general entourage was buried uh, under pyramids near the face. And he explains that the face and the pyramids were constructed there so that Atlanteans passing Mars, the planet Mars, would know where that exiled general was. So he explains that thousands of years ago in his Emerald Tablets before we ever had images of pyramids and a face on Mars in the Sidonia Plateau. Now, I'll, uh, it's, it's worth you listening to the Emerald Tablets. He's, he explains a lot of what they had. The Atlantean ancient technology, interstellar travel, and interdimensional travel. And he says that they uh, were misusing their technology, and it was just a matter of time before divine intervention, which exactly is what happened. Now, going back to this, the existence of a dead humanoid civilization on Mars, new proof of a nuclear catastrophe that took place on Mars. In an epic story of discovery, strong evidence is presented for a dead civilization on Mars and the shocking reason for its demise, an ancient planetary scale nuclear massacre leaving isotopic traces of vast explosions that endure to our present day. And this is by Myth and Mystery on the Collective Spark. The greatest justification for what may have occurred on Mars comes from a 2015 research written by physicist John E. Brandenburg. A tremendous thermonuclear explosion decimated the planet's atmosphere, which formerly resembled Earth's atmosphere. The Sidonia hypothesis and Fermi's paradox were taken into account in the investigation. Fermi's paradox, where is everybody, supposedly, if there are aliens out there? Now, the Sidonia plateaus where we have the face on Mars and the nearby pyramids on Mars. Now, in light of the imaging, image, imagining and geochemical, imaging and geochemical findings, Brandenburg thought about the Sidonia hypothesis. He used the Giza pyramids, the Sphinx, the Olmec heads, and analogs under the principles of mediocrity, with attention to detail to adopt a model of Earth-like degraded archaeology for comparison with Mars relics. Enrico Fermi investigated the issue of an active universe that may support intelligent life. In addition, he was aware of how old the universe was in comparison to us. Other species had plenty of time to evolve, create radio and television transmissions, and spread across the cosmos to all inhabited worlds. Since its inception, NASA has anticipated the possibility of discovering relics of earlier intelligent activity within the solar system, quote, though intelligent or semi-intelligent life may exist elsewhere in our solar system, it's very likely that if intelligent extraterrestrial life is discovered in the next 20 years, it will be by radio telescope from other solar systems. Artifacts left on the moon or other planets may potentially provide evidence of its presence, end quote. And we also have the Mars moon Phobos. It has the huge monolith on it. Who put it there and why? Now, as uh, an Apollo astronaut asked. Now, the Sidonian hypothesis, which postulates the existence of an old native culture on Mars that dates to the roughly Bronze Age, was supported by evidence from the two Martian locations, Sidonia Mensa and Galaxias Chaos, was demonstrated by physicist Brandenburg in his study. There is proof that a large mixed fusion-fission explosion occurred on Mars close to Sidonia Mensa, according to isotopic and gamma ray data from planet Mars. Large thermonuclear explosion on Mars in the past, evidence. The noble gases, whose original relative abundances are thought to have been fixed by primordial nucleosynthesis predating the formation of the solar system, remain nearly free of chemical reactions with the environment and which provide clues to the process that have shaped modern planetary atmospheres. Two noble gas isotopes, 129 Xeon Xe 
and 40 argon, 40 AR, dominate their other isotopes in relation to Earth and other inventory, which is a distinguishing characteristic of Mars' atmosphere. Due to nuclear processes occurring in a planetary environment, both of these gases are known to be radiogenic. In other words, they come from nuclear uh, explosions. Due to its distinctive isotopic characteristics, Mars was identified as the parent body of the SNC meteorites. It implies that significant radiological processes that produced a significant number of signature isotopes and blanketed the Martian surface in a thin layer of radioactive debris enriched the particular elements relative to its underlying rocks likely took place there. Two significant abnormal nuclear explosions that occurred on Mars in the past can be attributed to this pattern of phenomena. Since it's, it assumed that the same process, life evolution civilization, which produced the pyramids and the Sphinx on Earth, had operated on Mars and for a comparable period of time, it was the most straightforward explanation that could be formulated based on the Spaceship Vikings data for the apparent technology on Mars. Based on evidence that biology started early on Mars as it did on Earth and perished for the majority of its geologic history, this evidence includes an ocean bed on the youngest part of Mars, a high degree of oxidation in the surface and sediments of Mars, and evidence that both planets evolved with a liquid water environment on their surfaces. The face in Sidonia and the neighboring DNM pyramid were the two places where the Sidonian hypothesis was founded, along with evidence of a prolonged terrestrial climate on Mars. So could this Sidonia image, the NASA image of Sidonia, Mensa, with the face and the pyramids, could, could this be the area that Thoth the Atlantean, who wrote the Emerald Tablets, was referring to when he said that an exiled general and his entourage were buried on Mars for exile after their death, of course. Of course, at that time, Mars had a, a similar uh, climate and atmosphere to Earth. Now, going back to this, the author now comes to the conclusion that the HC, the CH, the Sidonia hypothesis, that is, has been confirmed after higher resolution images of the face and the DNM pyramid Sidonia. Mensa revealed apparent brickwork, brickwork, and new anatomical and artistic details not seen in Viking images, as well as new images of the face Galaxias A in Galaxias Chaos, also known as the Utopia site, which confirms its similar structure to the face in Sidonia Mensa and new details suggesting brick work. That is to say, some places on Mars have obvious eroded archaeology from a long-dead indigenous culture which is compatible with a long-lived, highly developed biosphere on Mars in the past, some to the one on Earth, similar to the one on Earth. And in passing, it's also important to note that the nuclear catastrophe detailed in the paper would have spared certain bacterial species and these might have been found in Gilbert Levine and Patricia Stratt's 1970s Viking labeled release experiments. The presence of a long dead humanoid society on Mars is entirely compatible with both the planet's apparent long lived Earth like past climate and the principle of mediocrity, which holds that a long lived Earth like environment will eventually give rise to intelligent life. This Martian civilization likely vanished as a result of an unidentified global destruction. The disaster that transformed Mars environment from being Earth-like to what it is now in a very short amount of geologic time. But was it a major nuclear assault that brought this civilization to an end? All things considered, the evidence points to Mars being the site of a nuclear war on a planetary scale. Thus, Mars could hold the key to solving Earth's Fermi's, uh, solving Fermi's paradox. Where is everybody? That is, where is where are all the ETs? To learn as much as possible about what happened there, Brandenburg suggested that a mission for human habitation of Mars be launched right now, he said. And, uh, of course, to find out what happened there. 
This is by Myth and Mystery on uh, Collective Spark. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.